Well, hello, welcome back to Legislative Update. I'm Nanette Bulabash, the host of this longest running program in WSCS TV's history. I'm delighted. Today we are doing something a little bit different, but it is so much fun. It, um, my host, or my guest today is Bernie Markovich. He is Sheboygan's Renaissance man, or I call him a great raconteur in the best sense of the word. And I, w I knew I wanted to do this show as, as much as two years ago when I attended a program at the Sheboygan County Historical Museum. It was packed. It was one of their third Saturdays, only they were having this in the evening. And it was just packed with people who wanted to hear stories from Bernie Markovich and Henry Young. And the slide presentation was put together by um, a third guy, um, Steve Gallimore. Gallim Gall Gallimore. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Bernie's going to correct me when I make a mistake. But I was just um, entranced by the energy in the room, by the, the stories that Bernie and Henry were telling. It was just phenomenal. You could, and people all wanted to add their own stories. And I thought, we've got to do a show on this. One, because you're a great storyteller. Two, because we have so many great stories about Sheboygan. Um, three, because your memories are so wonderful. And before we started, you were just making this point about how when you were growing up in the 50s and the 60s, I moved here in 1976. I was 18 years old. Um, and of course, it looked different then than it does now, but even 20 years before that. And you were making the point before we started, I wonder if you could repeat this, how when you were growing up, um, we all took it for granted. What do you mean by that? It's very simple. We thought it would always be there. It had been there for a hundred years at, at the point of the centennial. I'm a member of Grace Episcopal Church. We have been on that block since before Wisconsin became a state. Wow. And when we wrote our, our sesquicentennial remembrance book, uh, one of the things that we copied from a previous edition that Ruth Winfield had written was that if anyone from the 18 40s would come back to Sheboygan in the current day and ask where the Episcopal Church was. It's right where they left it <laughs> to be there for 150, and now That's it's wonderful. almost 175 years. There's something to be said about that. Yeah. And you look at other churches in town, holy name. Uh, who would ever expect a small town of 50,000 people to have this cathedral-like structure yeah, it's where there's no bishop? But it, you know, it was the faith. And of course, the very first historical thing that I learned was at the time of the centennial, churches, chairs, cheese, and children. Yep, yep. The city of the four seas. Well, there wasn't as much cheese as there is now. I mean, I think there yeah, was cheddar, cheese. and that was about it. But fewer Whoever chairs. Heard, a lot of chairs. <laughs> a a lot of chairs. So you know, the, the, the thing is, is that I've always uh, felt that the schools had done students a disservice because they never left us with the idea that we were part of history. Uh -huh. And that is the, the absolute <laughs> essence. You can be a direct part or an indirect part of history, but you're still part of it if, as long as you've lived through it. Right. So the Kennedy assassination is probably the most significant thing in, in my memory, of course, 9-11 would be significant because it affected that many more people, and we saw so much of it on television. But I can tell you, as a second grader living out east, having to crawl under my desk at school because of the atom bomb and its constant threat, uh, when we moved back to Wisconsin, my dad was in the, in the army, uh, we were living in Milwaukee. They had all those escape routes, all those yeah, diagonal right. streets to get you out of Milwaukee. To go where? Right. You know, what we, would we, be we left? We were so naive then. So, you know, it was always there. Prangies was always there. Okay. Christmas came. The windows came. There was always something to look forward to. There was always something at the farmer's market. You, know, you started out with the strawberries, and then the peaches came and all that kind of stuff. So we had everything in its season, and there was always something to look forward to. Now it's all there all the time, and we don't pay any attention to anything that's around us. Well, let's uh, get to some of these photos. Okay. Because we got a whole bunch, and I want to give credit to the people at the Sheboygan 
Sheboygan County Historical Museum who put together these photos. Some of them came from the Sheboygan County Historical Research Center. Right. Those are both phenomenal resources people can go to. They all they both have Facebook pages. I also stole a couple or borrowed a couple of photos from the State of Wisconsin collection. It's a digital collection online. Yes. Um, and beautiful photos of the Cordettes, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So we won't get through all the slides. I can tell you right now, I'm going to have to keep interrupting Bernie because he knows so much. But we're going to get through as many as we can. Fine. So we're going to start out with, we have a slide. So you're just going to hear our voices, and mostly let's look at these wonderful pictures, and Bernie's going to tell us about them. These were the people who were with the original show um, back in August of 2016 yeah, at the like museum. Yeah, almost 250 it was, people. You expected 50, and you had five times that much. And That's Tamara you. Lang, the curator there, she, um, was, she was afraid no one was going to oh show no, up. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, no. I loved it. I snuck in. I just, I was... I loved it. So, okay, so this is a photo from the Centennial, which was 1953. Yes. Correct? It was like a poster, they, and, and we can't read it so well from where we're sitting, but if you were watching this on TV or on your screen at home, you know, they had a day every every event. So you were there in 1953. Yes, yes. You I were was a young nine boy. and three quarters years. Actually, <laughs> it was probably nine and 11 tenths because I remember the parade as being in August and my birthday is in September. But uh, my mother, my brothers, and I, we watched it from the corner of 6th and Penn Avenue. Okay. It was the most glorious parade ever. Uh, I mean, because the floats were really beautiful. They were big. Uh, Bratwurst Day was one of the, uh, one of the days that, that they celebrated, the sausage making. Uh, I think there was a great big pageant someplace and, and there were church services uh, to be any place for a hundred years. Yeah. You know, right. uh, so and the they, thing is, is, is that deal. I remember reading months, somewhere years. that Sheboygan was supposed to have been Milwaukee at one time, but mm -hmm. it, it all had to do with the railroads. Yeah. And so well, uh, but here we were, I mean, a great port. And, uh, and when you see the old photographs of all those ships in the port and what mm -hmm. came and what went, you know, Okay, amazing. next slide, Scott. These are um, some dignitaries. And I think you mentioned in your presentation, one of these is the actor, John Coleman, or am I getting that name wrong? No. Okay. No. All right. It's Nobody's not. But somebody, it, some young Charles woman. Coburn Charles is Coburn is what. Charles okay. And his oil portrait is uh, used to be sitting in the lobby at uh, Urban Middle School because that's where community players used to be. Uh, and uh, that's right. Uh, he was, involved in he that. was uh, the famous character actor in okay. Hollywood. But uh, we've had others. Forrest Tucker has been here, and uh, uh, there used to be things that went on out at Elkhart Lake. Yes, he yeah. was involved with Camp Parand, which I yes. still remember too. Yes. The next slide has Jimmy Stewart, who wasn't here, we think maybe for the centennial, or we're not sure. Yeah. But Jimmy Stewart is getting something from a Sheboygan dignitary, and that was pretty exciting. Well, who was that? Um, the dignitary. I, because you know something? Didn't he play Billy Mitchell? Mitchell oh, was James uh, Stewart. yes was a Milwaukee. Right. The uh, his family uh, was very prominent in Milwaukee. The, mm -hmm. the old Wisconsin club is just on Wisconsin Avenue. That was the family home. They had the grain exchange. Mitchell Street was named for them. Mitchell Field right, was named right. for him. Okay. So next slide is um, the oh, famous streets of yes. Sheboygan. This is where they were changing the streets. Eighth Street became Bratwurst Boulevard. And, uh, and the side streets. Uh, Onion Oasis. Onion Oasis, Mustard Mall. Mustard Mall and Semmelstrasse. Semmelstrasse. Yeah. Pickle Plus. <laughs> and every one of these intersections had a broth stand on it that featured the sausage of one of the, the companies. You know, there's practically nothing left. Uh, you've got Johnsonville and you've got Old Wisconsin. And uh, I think there's a, a couple nice of places. Who? Meesfields? Meesfields, of course, Meesfields. Okay. Uh, and then Henry Brockman on the south side. Uh, yes. But you had Sheboygan sausage and, and Romer sausage and all that. So it, everyone had their favorite brats. Henry Poth used to make brats just down the street okay. from where I grew up. And all up. these people were grilling them in, on all, all the street corners, as you said. Yes, and, that's and then a too. host of them in Fountain Park. Uh, because that was the center place, that the center. and that was where they had the Miss Sheboygan pageant 
That's where Mary Alice Fox came in. A year she graduated from Central High School in 1957, and she ended up representing Sheboygan in the Miss Wisconsin pageant two years later because uh, the, the, the subsequent Bratwurst queens had married and were no longer available. Oh, you had to, you be, had single. to be single. And, and she won Wisconsin. She went to Atlantic City and was the first runner-up there. She's charming, charming that, girl. Now, the next slide is a float with some very pretty ladies on yeah. it. Is she in there, you think? I have. I doubt it. We don't know. But um, this is sponsored by the Elks L City Band. Yeah, but look at, the, look at the quality sausage. of the float. Yeah. You know, you I, see at the 4th of July parade, and you've got every pickup truck in town that's yeah. there with a float And you told me that it. you spent part of your career as a parade float designer. Yes. In every Texas? San Antonio, Texas. Nine years I was down there. It did every major parade in Texas. Did the Texas float for Jimmy Carter's inaugural parade, mm -hmm. uh, which was an event. And uh, because there was this huge loose leaf binder full of things that that inaugural committee would uh, wanted. And, and one of the things was we were not to mention peanuts. Well, Texas is Texas, and it's the Alamo and Cowboys and NASA and stuff like that. So the whole thing uh, was actually based on the Alamo. Mm -hmm. But we built part of it in San Antonio, put it on a truck, and then took it to uh, Washington, D.C., and then worked out of a, a place there to finish it. But sacred, Secret Service people everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. told me you got that job because you could tell them that you grew up in Sheboygan helping to make Growing parade Growing up in floods. Sheboygan didn't help. What cinched the deal for me was when the branch manager asked me if I was, uh, uh, if I'd ever done a parade float before, I could look him in the eye and say yes, never admitting that the only float I ever worked on was something from the summer uh, playground program, the 4th of July oh. parade here, which was a big <laughs> deal in those days, but we'd make rosettes and every school ground had its major float and then there were the bicycles and the wagons and all that, and then we had the lantern parade. So, you know, I left here with a whole lot of information. Uh, my, my stress, other than the love of history, uh, was imagination. And so I had, uh, I had Don Kahn as a mentor, David Bryant, uh, both of them deceased, but I mean a, a major part of my life. I had the best education here. And, you know, we painted windows for UNICEF on Halloween downtown. Every store on the main street mm -hmm. would let us come in, uh, students from the two high schools, and paint these windows. And I, the, the traditions that we grew up with, uh, I, it was just magical. I thought, why would anyone want to go to New York? Because I thought we had it all here. Mm -hmm. And we did until I went to New York, and then that was a whole different story. <laughs> but you came back. Like yes. so many of us came yeah. back. Well, I but did you too. know something? I think that's essential. Uh, if you're going to go away, coming back is the, is the important part. Yeah. Because uh, as I would tell people about, you know, what I experienced growing up, the cultural events that we had, the Distinguished Guest Series out in Kohler, mm -hmm. community concerts in town, uh, community players. Schroen Community Players was the largest community theater in the country yeah. it's per pretty capita. Impressive. And it's all of this impressive. was waiting. Um, yes. So... You know, so we've we got 15 minutes left to, I know, I know. To, to talk about the other 99 so and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple more parade photos from the original Bratwurst Parade in 1953. Here's a truck, Cushion Kings. Um, oh, it's, it's a shoe. It's a big, giant shoe. From well, that could have been anything. That's probably a work boot. That would have okay. been Heine Young's family business, okay. the Young yeah. Shoe Company, because their cousins, the Leverances, uh, and Mrs. Leverance was a young, they did the men's dress shoes. Um. So, you know, and it was amazing. Garton made the croquet the sets. Uh, um, the toys. And, well, yes, and the, and the uh, but, but it was Bemis that made the croquet balls. Oh. You know, and Bemis made the toilets, Ethan Kohler made the toilets, and these companies all worked together for the common good, you know. Yeah, I mean, God, yes. there were horrific fires and stuff like that. These businesses came back. They just oh, came back. Yeah. It's just that the country outgrew everything. Yeah. And you can blame President Eisenhower and his interstate system because that's what <laughs> killed it all. Oh, gosh. I used so, to be able to take the train to Milwaukee or Chicago and come back the same day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it was nice. You didn't have to worry about parking or anything like that. Still do it on occasion. Well, at the museum, I attended one of their programs showing old film footage. 
And one of these films showed workers from Prangis who were, tr who were driven out on a train to Elkhart Lake for their summer picnic. Yes, to a the Prangy Cottage. Yeah. It yes. Was, I mean, just, that's, that's and incredible. And there was a party. You take a train from Sheboygan to Elkhart. The Peter Rice's and, and there's had, a band met them. Yes. Peter Rice had a, a great big farm in Sheboygan Falls. The, the, the house still is there. They used to go to Sheboygan Falls. Uh, it, their dairy came from there. Their vegetables came from there and all that business. And uh, they had a barn dance. They built this big barn. They took that inner urban out to Sheboygan Falls, like 800 people. Okay. For a barn dance, oh, I mean, it was oh. amazing. So a couple more parade photos, and then we got to get on to. Um, I think I have, and you can keep going, Scott. He's doing our slides for us here. Yeah, well, there it was, Eighth Street. It and was, how packed it was. That's yes, and all the, the all the way and down. And so the the parade started at one o'clock, and when the parade was over, they bar put barricades up at Eighth and Penn and all the way up to 8th and Erie. And so that was Bratwurst Boulevard. The park was part of that thing. And that whole of 8th Street, those five, six blocks, were all people this eating and drinking deal. and having a lovely time for the most part. But mm -hmm. you know, it got to be big. Yeah, that's too big. I heard that's and, why they uh, had you know, to discontinue it. And it us. became a haunt for, for college kids. Now, th that fountain in the lower right-hand corner was the fountain that used to be in the center of the park. And uh, they probably melted it down in World War II for scrap metal or something because there was a band shell built on the, the footprint of that, that fountain. And that's our next slide, yeah. There it is, yes. The, uh, so the, that was in the center, whereas yes. now it's on the lower west, southwest corner. The, the, the band, the yes, and that was a Matt Warner was just, was just hell-bent to build that band shell there uh, because of the summer band concerts. Right. But I remember uh, there was a time when those band concerts used to be in Kiwanis Park and people would bring chairs mm -hmm. or you could sit on the Four Hills and, and listen to those concerts. Uh, and now you've got the Levitt concerts, you know, that are part of the Arts Center in Summers. You know, it keeps growing. So there's another band shell downtown. And so now there are concerts at both, Wednesday night for Fountain Park and then Thursday night for the Arts Center concerts. Uh, so you're going to admit we, we are doing some great things in Sheboygan now, right? Well, yes. The Levitt I, concert, the spirit you can't argue isn't, with that. The spirit isn't dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> but boy, they've done everything to kill it, oh, I gosh. think. You know, oh, because uh, back in the day, uh, you could go from Michigan Avenue all the way down to New Jersey Avenue. And regardless of how much or how little you had to spend, there was a merchant there waiting to take it. Mm -hmm. There were five newsstands on that street, five and they stands. all made a living because Mrs. Mao sold the tchotchkes and the cigarettes, and the City News had, had hardbound books and social stationery plus the magazines, and then the drugstores all had the little magazine counters, you know. Uh, and there were so many drugstores, and there were at least two places to eat on every block. So, you know, and, uh, you know, it, you could literally go from one end to the other and eat, eat, eat. And then there were all the other places in town. Well, you could also shop. So the next couple of photos are And you could drink because there was <laughs> always a cocktail place. lounge. Okay. So, our next, so here we have an early version of the Prangy Company. And we can't, we don't have time to get to the whole history of Prangy's, but I know anybody of any age in Sheboygan um, of a certain age can remember going to Prangy's. They had a wonderful there coffee There it is. Shop. That's the better slide. Okay. Where you can see um, on the right-hand side. Yes. The big building, the big yeah, brown right. building was Prangy's. And across the street was Sheboygan Dry Goods, which became Hill's Department Store. And next to it was the Alfred Young Company. Alfred Young Company was for the carriage trade. It had the first salon and all that okay. stuff. Prangy's became great in the Depression when they took all of that farm produce in and gave them chits in exchange rather than money oh. that they could, they could spend stuff there. And as one company went down, the other one went up. But I mean, it was amazing the stuff that you could buy here, the various jewelry stores and stuff, fine china and things like that. Uh, the H.C. Prangy, uh, the There's new a different part, view of that. that was the annex. That used to be a dime store and they, they took all those big appliances and put them in there and the televisions and things like that. And uh, 
you know, Christmas would come and go, the, uh, the seasons would change. Every department in the store had two major sales a year and they spread them out. It wasn't that everything was on sale every day. Uh, they didn't have the coupons and all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, is that I, Sarah Axel, who was a dear friend of mine, told us once that she had a, a cleaning lady uh, who had never been in Prangy's store because she didn't think she could afford to buy anything in there but she was comfortable across the street at the dry goods, or she would go to, to Penny's or Sears. Penny's and Sears were right next to each other in the old cell department store building, but uh, Penny's only sold soft goods, clothing, and Sears only sold the hard stuff, the tools, Appliances. the paint, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The 60s came, and they decided they all wanted to sell everything, and that's how they ended up out at the mall. Yeah. Uh, Right, so now they're not there. Yeah, no so. one's there. That's the sad thing. It's all gone. It's all on, on Amazon and stuff like that. Oh, you know. gosh. It's unfortunate. So we have some interior shots of Prangies. This is a woman trying on a hat. They had a whole hat. Millinery up Millinary. on second floor. Oh, gosh. With oh, better dresses, better coats, juniors, children's clothes. Mm. Uh, here, this is what we were talking about right. earlier. This is annual signing. Look at that. Uh, high school students from north and south. North and south with their yearbooks. Would at come Prangies. Here. Yes, in Prangies. In Prangies. In Prangies. Kids they would clear yearbooks. all the counters off. And so you, you had the whole of the first floor. How fun. Uh, did you do yeah. that? Did I? Yeah. Yes, we all did. You all sign your, your own. You know, and now they don't even sign annuals. Well, They some can't kids write. Do. No, I'm serious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we got to call here some women or younger yeah. high school girls. Well, this is probably graduates. the teen board. Uh, okay. They used to have fashion shows and stuff oh. like that. They had classes in makeup and how to dress properly and, and uh, I suppose how to walk and, and, and things like that because it was a very popular program. There wasn't anything like that for the boys, but I can tell you when the state tax came, if a young man walked into the men's clothing department and bought a winter jacket, they used to call them ski jackets because mm -hmm. they, they're like car coats, the ski jacket was not taxable if you bought it in the young man's shop, but if you went down to the ski shop, it was. That's yes. crazy. It was, well, of course, it's the state, you know, and huh. taxes. And everybody was, if you bought one donut at the restaurant, you had to pay tax on it. If you bought a dozen of them at the bakery, you didn't because it was food. Oh. And I was working at Cons at the time, and we had a line of soap and candle products and all that. We had to get... Uh, from the company that manufactured it, a list of the ingredients because if a certain ingredient was in there, it was taxable and it wasn't. Okay. We would take, uh, for a man in the hospital, an ashtray, taxable, and we would put a small flower arrangement in there with a, brand, a package of his brand of cigarettes open with a little box of matches. The matches were taxable as well until it became a vessel for flowers and then it wasn't taxed. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. You know. So, okay, the next one, the Sheboygan, uh, the Volrath Zoo. And I have friends who grew up here who talked about the zoo. I don't remember when it closed. It must have been in the 70s, maybe? Volrath what? Bull? The, the, the zoo. The zoo oh, in Oh, yeah, Volrath that closed Bowl. in the you 70s. You can't really see the animals back here, but that's how it's They were a the pretty bottom. pitiful lot. There they was a blind okay. lion and, a, oh, oh. I, t I think a one or two so very thing that it closed tired For bear. the animals' sake. Okay. And there were some raccoons and uh, okay. um, maybe a fox or two. There were some monkeys. Okay. I remember graduation rehearsal uh, in the bowl. Uh, somebody had given one of the monkeys a, a cigarette. Oh my! <laughs> yeah, oh my. he had to be there. Uh, it was so. it was ours. You know, it was a place to go. It didn't cost anything. It didn't cost us anything to to see the animals and all that. It was a thing to do on a Sunday afternoon when everything was closed. If you ran out of milk, you had to get up so that you could go to the corner grocery store, which were everywhere, uh, and buy the milk then. You, there were no 7-Elevens or, you know, uh, those markets that you can go, that are open 24 hours a day. Nothing was open 24 hours a day except for the no. hospital and, Sundays, and the funeral yeah. parlors. You close on, so two more slides, and then I think we're almost, we're out of time. Yeah. So the next one, I think I... It's still another version of Prangy. It is, but look how big and magnificent yes, it was. It and beautiful. then, of course, uh, you know, what they did is uh, 
they remodeled it and they covered it with a whole new surface. It was all white uh, uh, bricks. The windows was gone. There was a great big H.C. Prangy sign. They took one of the entrances out and they put the air door in. That okay. was a big thing because they could open it up in the winter and uh, there were no doors to pull or anything like that. And it had to be a blustery and blizzard. And the Christmas windows. The which, Christmas windows. Which you can still see at the museum. You can still, they, they, they've absorbed or acquired some of those old, some of beautiful it. things. Uh, but we've got people, people think we have it all. We don't. Uh, oh. there, pe people are asking for certain things. The one that I keep hearing about is the grandmother that's spanking the little boy. Oh. <laughs> uh, we've never had it. No. God only knows where it went. What happened to uh, that? But the thing is, all the magic of the holidays was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the history of the Festival of Trees, I was looking for a theme uh, for a tree that I was doing. And I went to the library and got the microfiches out for, uh, I think it was 1953, because they wanted to see what Prangy's advertising was like. There was a full page of advertising for ladies' handkerchiefs that sold for anywhere from 59 cents to $5. Wow. A page, a whole page. Yeah. I mean, it made no sense. Illustrations, uh, I mean, it was just absolutely amazing. But quality. I got my theme. It was, it, was the, it was the golden world of Christmas. Mm. And so it helped. And I, I just think that, you know, what we're used to, it, what, what you hear people talk about more often than not uh, is about what's gone. Do you remember when? Uh, you go to estate sales and people are buying up any little scrap of Sheboygan history that they can find yeah. because there are people that saved all these articles that were in the paper and they're sitting at, at some of these sales, you know, about the centennial. Uh, whatever happened in, in, in the history, uh, the Kohler strike, I mean, people well, are always looking for stuff like that. Anything that says prangies on it. I have a book, uh, there's a new department store in Milwaukee called Von Mauer. It is a family owned company and uh, there's two pages in the back of that book of every family owned department store that has gone out of business oh and it's in small print and that's, we should be mourning all of that because what we remember of Prangies, somebody in Des Moines is remembering that about Yonkers or uh, whatever was there, Marshall Fields, to walk into that building and see I, Macy's, it's enough to turn your stomach. I can't believe how stomach. much the time is gone. Bernie yeah. Markovich, raconteur, historian, costume set designer, um, catering business, chef, all these things, and fantastic storyteller. Thank you so much. We will continue this. This is Nanette Bulabash. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, you can find all of this at Sheboygan County Historical Museum. The Historical Research Center has tons of photos. You can find it online. Go to the Historic Sheboygan Facebook page. There's, there are tons of resources, and as long as we've got Bernie, we can learn more about him. Thanks for joining us.